Hello Engine 1060. In this video, I will be going over saving, importing and exporting data. The variables that you create do disappear when you close MATLAB. This is an issue if your M files take a long time to run. You do have the option to save and load your workspace using the save and load commands. The workspace files have a .mat format. Alternatively, you can press the save workspace button in your home tab. Up until this point, we have created data in MATLAB either using manual input or MATLAB built-in functions. However, many engineering problems use data collected from real-world sources. As an example, we have sensors or even people collecting data. So we can load in such data to avoid having to type it in manually. There are two methods for importing data. The first is using the fopen, fclose and fgetl functions. The second is using a package called the import data function. Both of these methods have their advantages and disadvantages, so use the one that is most appropriate to your task. I will now go over these two methods, starting with the fopen, fclose and fgetl functions. The fopen function will open a file the syntax for it is to specify a variable, namely file ID is equal to fopen and then in parentheses have the string of our file name. A file is then assigned to a file identifier when it is open using fopen. And you need to ensure that the file that is being opened is in the current directory. We have here the current folder which lists all of these files and here I am opening the temperatures.txt data file. In the command window I've opened it using fopen and I have assigned the file ID to a variable called x. Note that x is now equal to 3. I can also close the file or close the link between the file identifier and the file by using the fclose function. The syntax for fclose is simply fclose and in parentheses have the file ID. So here I'm closing my temperatures.txt file by having fclose of x. Once we have opened a file with fopen, we can use the fgetl function to extract lines of data from the file. The syntax for that is some variable is equal to fgetl of our file ID. fgetl will import the data as a string. As an example, here we have the temperatures.txt data file, which contains a list of numbers. This is my M file. In the first line, I've created a variable for my file name, which is a string temperatures.txt. Next, I'm opening the file using fopen. Then I'm using fgetl to extract the data from the file. Next, I use fgetl to extract the data from the file, and I'm storing that into a variable called temperature. As I said, fgetl will import the data as a string, so I then have to convert the string into a number using the string to num command. And finally, I close the file using fclose fid. I can then use fprintf to print the mean temperature. The corresponding workspace is shown on the right, where we have fid starting off with 3. This comes from our fopen. 
I have my file name, which is my string. I have temperature, which comes from my fgetl, which is also a string. Then I have converted my string into numbers, into num temp variable. And finally, fclose produces an answer of zero. There are limitations when using fgetl. You would need to call fgetl n number of times to get n number of lines from a text. As an example, here I have a file which contains 19 lines of data. This is the M file I'm using to extract the first four lines. Again, we have a variable for our file name. Then we can use F open. Using F get L for the first time will extract the first line. Using F get L again will extract the second line and so forth. So calling F get L four times in this M file will get the first four lines in the data file. This is the corresponding workspace. You can see that D1 is equivalent to this first line here. D2 is the second line. D3 corresponds to the third line. And D4 is the fourth line. So imagine a case where we had to read a file with over a thousand lines. It would be quite tedious to call fgetl over a thousand times to obtain all of the information from the data file. So instead, we can use something called the import data function. The import data function will load the entire data file in one go. Do note that the import data function is different to the import data wizard. The syntax for the import data function is given by some variable is equal to import data and then in parentheses we have our string of the file name. The import data command loads in all of the data in the file so there is no need for the f open and f close commands. You are able to have more control using the import data function. The only drawback is that the import data function cannot write to files. The import data function imports data as a structure. In MATLAB, a structure is comprised of the numerical data, which is noted as data. We have the text data, which is noted as text data. And we also have column headers, which is noted as col headers. This is the output that we see in the command window after running x is equal to import data and my file name which is debris.txt. We can access the data portion of x by typing x.data. We can access the text data portion of x by typing x.data and the same can be done with the column headers for x.col headers. Once you have imported your data and separated them into the numerical data, text data, and column headers, you can further sort the data into meaningful variables. So in the data file, we have three columns. We have our height, our time, and our velocity. And I want to put those into separate variables. I can do this by saying that the height is equal to the first column of numData num data being the data portion of our x variable time is the second column and velocity is the third column we can use fprintf in conjunction with fopen to export our data to files we can use the w argument together with fopen to give us permission to write so here i've created a vector for my height which is 10 with steps of 5 up to 90. I've then called my function file debris drop to calculate the time and the velocity vectors. I can open up a file using fopen. 
with my file name and as an additional argument I'm using w to write. Next I'm using fprintf with my file id as my first argument. Then I have my string that I want to write to the file. A similar thing is done in the next few lines where I'm using fprintf to print strings and numbers. This is the resulting file that I get from my three fprintf commands. To be clear, this first line creates this first line up here. This second fprintf creates this second line. And third, since I am printing a matrix using fprintf, I will get lines 3 to lines 19. So in summary, in this video we looked at how to save and load workspaces, how to import data using the fopen, fgetl and fclose combination, how to import data using the import data function, and also how to export data using fprintf. As a final thought for this video, why does the file identifier start with 3 when using fopen?